welcoming end of you. And that's why, you know, it's hard to speak of it because people all want you to take sides as to whether or not the officer is to blame or whether or not Michael Brown was to blame. Who cares? What, the- matter, what matters is the outcome. And the outcome we're going to see is we're going to see this redistribution of wealth, social policy changes, and we're going to see active resolve of the police state in this country, like it or not. And, and the thing is, is that I've only been wrong on one point. I did not think that something like this would spark protests throughout the country tonight. It did. I was wrong. Yes, we could see the entire country go up in flames if something like this goes down where it pisses off enough people. So, yeah, one thing I was wrong about, and that's that, because I thought people weren't stupid enough to follow the monkey, but they're doing it. 888-673-3700. We'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. This is not a test. It is the future. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. 888-673-3700. It's 888-673-3700. We go to Bill in Washington. Hi, Bill. You're on Ground Zero. Hi, Clyde. Hey, man. My question is where can we go, what avenue can we take to legally turn the system around and... uh, and stave off the, the 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 social takeover that we're now experiencing. Well, you need to find good constitutional lawyers, for one. Uh, two, you need to be aware of who the head of the grand jury is. Uh, find, a, uh, find a case that everybody can agree on that we can indict someone. We take them to court and, uh, and we give them their papers. And, and if the people speak up using the grand jury and using the Constitution as the cornerstone for their law... And we convict and in, or we indict someone who has uh, done something against us or has done something to uh, make America less America, then uh, we win at least one blow. But no one has done it. Everybody feels powerless and all they feel like they can do is just hold a sign and say, don't shoot, don't shoot, hands up, don't shoot. Or they can get on a radio show and they can insult a talk show host who's trying to do his best to get honest uh, discussion going on. Or, you know, there are a number of things that don't get anything done. I mean, we can have a discussion here and we have the open dialogue that we have here, Bill. But the truth is, is until we find out how we go about getting a lawyer that's a constitutional lawyer that believes that there is injustice being done. And there are a number of people who are going after these people who are committing injustices and doing it on a local level first. And then go on a national level later. Uh, you, 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 work, you work slow and you work, uh, you know, with, with a method. And they work slow and with a method. I mean, they look at the long picture they look at being here uh, for like two 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 or three terms maybe sure. even longer than that i'd like to speak to the question briefly yeah go ahead well the thing is is that uh clyde touched on it you know uh we do feel powerless i'm i'm vic- I, I, i'm uh guilty of that you know when i feel powerless i don't i don't want to get out of bed the thing is is that we need to stop as a culture feeling like we're just spectators we really need to actively engage in society you know I really meant it, and I believe this, that if everyone would make a small life pattern change, it doesn't take much. What you spend your money on, who you decide to listen to, you know, change a small life pattern, and it will perpetuate a positive change in society. Mm -hmm. If there is a positive change in society, the laws will conform to mimic what the popular culture demands. Right. So change a small pattern in your lives and stop waiting for a leader. We are all leaders. We all need to stand up and do something. It doesn't matter, even if it's something small. Yeah, we're not doomed. No, we're absolutely just, not. We're just uninformed. And, right. and there's no reason for a revolution until we have a revelation. Yeah. And certainly not very many people get revelations anymore. They just think that it's time to take guns and shoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why you got Ferguson happening. 888-673-3700, we'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. Ferguson, Missouri. 
what started out as a peaceful protest quickly evolved into civil unrest. And all of a sudden it became about race, and it became a race card issue. The media exploits the situation to push whatever insidious political agenda they claim not to have. It was a peaceful protest. America is becoming a police state. There must be some way out of here. Set the joker to the feet. Aren't you glad you don't live here? Because we got people that's over there that's not for the protest. They just breaking into stuff. And it's our community. That's right. So that don't make sense. If we here for the protest, be here for the protest. And I can come down here to peacefully protest. Can I not? No reason to get excited. The feet become the spoke. There are many here among us who feel that life is but a joke. Ferguson PD and St. Louis County Police hold a press conference regarding the shooting with details that contradict eyewitness reports. The curfew went into effect. We are standing at what was ground zero last night in the uh, confrontation between some demonstrators and police. You can see uh, many more police officers wearing helmets, uh, wearing body armor. So as you can see, uh, that's the St. Louis County Police Department, despite early reports that uh, they had been replaced are out here now. It looks like it's going to be a very, very bad night. Reports are conflicting from witnesses and other officers involved. And again, this only proves again and again that the current president, Barack Hussein Obama, hates America. I'm Clyde Lewis, and you are listening to Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I'm sure you've got an opinion about what's going on in Ferguson tonight. In fact, uh, we uh, we immediately dropped the, the idea that our guests and everything about our show because this broke. And when the president spoke, we knew we had to cover this because this was a big deal. And we were starting to see what was going on down there now. It looks like Ferguson is on fire. The protests continue tonight, well into the darkest night, well into the you know late, late, late night, early morning. We go now to Jack in San Diego. Hi, Jack. You're on Ground Zero. So the ongoing protest in Ferguson uh, also became a protest against the militarization of the police force, uh -huh. as was the case at the Bundy Ranch. Mm -hmm. So my question for your guest is, why do you think the militia didn't show up in Ferguson and support the people there. Because culturally, the militias are inculcated into this false dialectic of right versus left. There aren't any pervasive left-wing uh, militias. You know, personally, I think the uh, Second Amendment is there to protect the first. You know, that's my own personal feelings about it. The people at the Bundy Ranch, the, re the reason why... That there wasn't a massive amount of police state response to them is quite simply the people were going to shoot back. Okay, if you want a real revolution in this country to start and the ruling power elite know this, you shoot about 40 people because those people were armed. They were aiming rifles at ATF, FBI agents, and they were willing to fight. You know, regardless of their political ideology, uh, if they're right or left, it didn't matter. If they were going to have to go there with the American people, it would have ignited something in the streets that the government doesn't want. So when we're talking about the uh, militarization of the police force, uh, you see that as a left-right issue? I see the militarization of the police force as something that's going to transcend the left-right issue because when we keep fighting amongst ourselves with these left-right issues to the point of uh, justifying violence, whether it, whether it be violence against the right or violence against the left wing, all we're doing is encouraging more police state cr uh, clampdown. What people need to realize is that we're all being affected equally by the militarization of the police. You know. Yeah, see, and I agree with that, which is why I think the reason why the militia didn't show up in Ferguson is because it's, if you looked at the um, racial makeup 
of the militia that showed up at the Bundy Ranch, sure, uh, they were all white. Mostly. So there's a, a racism element to the militia movement. And so my next question is, why do you think black people haven't taken advantage of the Second Amendment and formed their own militias? Well, they did. It was called the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. In Oakland, California in the 1960s, these people walked around with 12-gauge shotguns and notepads, and they watched cops do their jobs, and the government systematically hunted them down and killed them. Periodically, over a, 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 a couple-year period, they were all hunted down and shot. Uh, police would show up at their houses and knock on their doors and say, we have a search warrant, and when they'd hear the pitter-patter of little feet down the hallway, they'd shoot through the walls and kill them. Um, it, it, that's why. You know, there, there, there were black groups that, that respected the Second Amendment, and they were open carrying before the right-wing groups were open carrying. They were open carrying on the streets with notepads, watching the police with shotguns, you know. So this incident kind of reminds me a little bit of the uh, Rodney King scenario. Very similarly. The uh, officers were exonerated by an all-white jury. Sure. But then the federal government stepped in and tried the police officers on civil rights violations, that they violated the civil rights right. of Rodney King, and they were convicted, and they served time in prison. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you and the, the audience. The might step in here and, and uh, prosecute this police officer for civil rights violations? Of course he will. You, they, can, you bet they you will. Can, you can bet on it. Yeah, you, there, there will be a civil uh, lawsuit given his family millions. But also, Title 18, Section 2. 41 of the U.S. Criminal Code says that thousands of acts of conspiracy against rights was perpetrated by the Ferguson police, that, that, that there needs to be a class action lawsuit. Hundreds, if not thousands of people from Ferguson need to all pull their money together, do a class action lawsuit, bring um, the, the Title 18, Section 241, uh, both things, cr criminal charges and civil charges against all the cops in Ferguson. You're talking, uh, you know, a hundred million dollar lawsuit could be settled. You could get substantive change just by, you know, prosecuting some of these cops. And that law, breaking that law is a 10 year prison sentence, a maximum of 10 years. Conspiracy against rights. Seriously. I mean, people need to wake up. If you're a lawyer and you're socially conscious, I don't care if you're right or left wing, please Google this law I'm talking about and help out the people of Ferguson. Because in doing so, you'll help out the people of the nation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I look at the, um, the federal government or the state, if you will, as kind of like um, the parent. And we, the citizens, are its children. Sure. And, um, and the federal government, they set the example. So if you look at how the They government treat us like children, so we start acting uh, that way, yes. Injustice, when they find an injustice, they use...